Bonjour, can I hear you? Hello to everyone who has tuned in to uh, listen about uh, homelessness, cockroach infestations as of today. My name is Darlene Nikan. I am a band member of the Ojibwe Nation of Saugeen Indian Tribe Number 258, located in the traditional lands of Treaty 3 in Northwestern Ontario. I'm also a great kokum to twins, two-year-olds, who live in the city of Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. I would like to shed some light to the hardships as an Indigenous living in the city. Okay, uh, introduction line. Um, well, as of today, um, I am dealing with, uh, just like I said, I'm shedding light to the situation that's happening with uh, my, granddaughter, my granddaughter and great-granddaughters who, uh, who live in this uh, uh, infested uh, cockroach building. Um, um, I, 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 it's, it's hard to, um, no, it's not, I shouldn't say it's hard. It's not hard to describe the living situations because we've been so used to it all these years as living as to a, a society living in the city under the um, well, uh, Ontario work system. So my granddaughter lives in the Ontario works uh, system. Um, she pays uh, a lot on her uh, rent. It's market price, um, and um, and uh, she um, like she only gets like eleven hundred from the social services, and it goes directly to the to the landlord of that building. And uh, she's still short by uh, probably one one fifty something along those lines, and uh, so she covers that leftover rent with her uh, with uh, her. Uh, child tax she gets in the middle of the month which is supposed to be directly to for the kids uh, needs so she has to dip into that to pay uh, you know the leftover rent on it um, um, as of today um, before Christmas uh, I had called in and uh, asked about you know about the cockroaches at that building and they said they were, it was going to get fumigated. It did get fumigated um, last week and last Tuesday. And um, and ever since then, I didn't go back there. But before it got fumigated, I did, like, clean up the whole apartment and uh, bagged everything, like I said, like, bagged everything, did laundry, you know, wiped down the floors again with Javix water, even threw their little toys in the tub, washed them out. And, you know, I did all the whole thing. Just to make it easier for the fumigation guys, instead of them moving the stuff around, I, I moved everything, I begged everything, I did it. And uh, so the granddaughter and them weren't supposed to leave for uh, this flying reserve uh, till just before Christmas, but I told them to go away ahead of time because just to get the kids out of there because it was not good. It was not good. It was terrible. And um, so they left. So they, uh, they came back. Uh, last Monday and it just gave me about two days to try to clean up the house but I couldn't make it the first day the city shut down because they had a bad snowstorm so I went there the other day and uh, I was there and while I was in there you know I noticed there was uh, cockroaches going up against the wall again even though the smell of the chemical was still there and all that and um like I, I had my cleaning stuff. I just pretty well said, you know, what's the use of cleaning this place when they're already back again? It's gonna take me all that energy again to clean it up, and and then they move back in, and then the cockroaches will be right back there again when you know when there's food on the counters and all that. So I just totally just didn't do anything. So at the same time, while I was there, I called the, the other granny. Um, the grandmother uh, to come and just for verification to see like uh, what uh, what was um, going on and for confirmation on my part as a witness and uh, she did come and then we did start taking uh, video shots of the of the place I only did the the front part like the kitchen and the doorway I didn't go to the back rooms the back rooms had those uh, sticky things all over with lots of cockroaches stuck on them and they're under the, the heaters. So that's where, and then towards the back of the living room too as well, like there was some, and there was like cockroach galore. 
And I just said, I don't know about this place, man. And uh, so she too said, agreed that, you know, no, no, this is not, this is not good. This is not right. So anyways, yeah, we agreed that we were not going to let the kids come back into the, into the apartment building. And um, so anyways, um, um, we, we discussed it and we said, no, girls are not going to. So we went and talked to the other great granny and um, she did uh, welcome the girls to come and stay, you know, for a few days. And, uh, but her place is uh, tiny and crowded and she's got two other foster kids she's looking after. So she got a 16 month year old and a three year old and then the two twin two year olds that are there right now. So it's kind of a, a ruckus house, but, um, and um, you know, the kids need their own space. So we're we're trying to um, um, come up with this idea, like okay, we got till January fourth before uh, Randy's uh, uh, Tikkanagan child worker comes back to work on January fourth. So we already did call the Tikkanagan office, gave them the whole rundown of what's going on there and how we're not letting those kids back into that building, into that apartment. Um, so it's all done with them. We let them know, give them heads up. So we're just going to wait for the, her taking a wagon worker to uh, to come so that way we could probably, uh, we're going to see if she could go into a crisis home. And, uh, you know, because we do see this as an emergency crisis um, with the cockroaches and they're just babies. So um, it's very unsafe, unhealthy. and it's just not right. And as a witness as to this, as a great Kokum, it, it bothers me. First, I wasn't going to do anything and just tough it out. But I said, no, no, this can't keep going on. Because, you know, she does pay a lot. She was not forewarned either about, you know, the, the place being cockroached. You know, she said if she would have been forewarned, she would have never took the place. But uh, she also has a neighbor that had said the same thing. Like, you know, um, uh, she didn't know that uh, she, that place is cockroach where she's at right now. But uh, this is a, a young non-native lady that's going through this as well. And um, she must be a new one because I've seen her there before. So... But there are new people moving in there, but I think they're moving out just as quick. And uh, just like the third floor, I went and inquired too up there and uh, knocked randomly on any door. And then uh, just now a native guy answered and I asked him the same thing about cockroaches. He said yes, and he says he was out of there too in the new year. Yeah, he was, he seemed upset. So we left it at that. I went to the second floor as well and knocked randomly, but um, <laughs> we'll leave it at that too. But anyways, I did go do do my homework around there and asked verbally the tenants, and um, that's when I knew, like, no, they, no, they're not, they're not going to stay in there. So right now they're as of homeless. And the thing too is, um, I tried to uh, call all the gear to income housings. I even tried Sulacote, Dryden, Thunder Bay, and I, you know, trying to see how we could move to get a place right away. They said they, they have to put in an application and it's about a two to five year wait for um, people waiting for these geared to income housings. And I said, oh my God, you mean to say before she could qualify into a house and still live in this cockroach, unsafe, unhealthy place. Like she's got to stay here for two years and wait till she gets in a house. Like, like, okay, where is this going? Right? So that, that's, to me, that's not right. That's that's not right. That's crazy. And um, so as I continue on thinking about, you know, the homelessness and um, everything that's going around, like, you know, Vancouver, probably Toronto to uh, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, they have all these tent huts where everybody's got, you know, homeless tents, right? And then, uh, and then I look at the whole picture and I say, well, what's wrong with the picture here? Why are all these people homeless and living on the streets like that, right? So, and it brings me back to in my hometown in Savant Lake, where I see 
truckloads of logs getting hauled out of our territory. And when I look at these logs going by, I always imagine in my head, like, oh my God, there'd be two or three houses right there. Another, another two or three houses. I, my mind keeps going like that. And I said, why? What is happening here? To, as you know, our chiefs and councils from each of these reserves up here, and their people are the ones that are on the streets. Then you, you know, I know it's a big social problem in a sense, a lot of mental health, so to that. But everybody's got to, you know, figure out where they stand and, you know, why Why is this problem growing? When, um, when you know, I'm pretty sure houses can go up, especially for single mothers. Like, you know, I, I really don't, I'm really freaked out about apartment buildings now. Um, but I would suggest, like, you know, like um, houses to be built ASAP. If they can build corporate buildings like really fast, I witnessed two buildings go up in one year. In one year, one in Sulacot and another one in Thunder Bay. I said, see how fast they build these houses. But when they look at the social problems of the people that really, really need shelter and the right to have shelter, they don't look there. It's always an excuse, oh, there's no money. There's no money. Okay, where, where's the money going? And besides our sellout, some, uh, some of the chiefs and some of the reserves that have contracts with the, the forestry companies, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, it makes you really wonder, you know, why are they uh, pocketing their own pockets? You know, what is it that they're the self-worth of this money when it should be as a fiduciary duty to house and help their people? So my mind keeps going around like that. And then I think, what is the wrong with the problem here? What, what's wrong? As I stood with the poverty group of Thunder Bay on December 10th, I couldn't help but think that as well. I, I joined their walk, their march that, that day, because that is what they were talking about, uh, the, you know, the Ontario Works, uh, workers' compensation, and all, all the, the social issues is that's when I went and joined them and um, yeah it it really bothers me there should be a move in this like a rich Canada that we all live in what's the problem I'd like to tell Trudeau that but anyway you know um, so a lot of those things run in my head as I'm going through this to trying to deal with this uh, this infestation and right now the homeless of the of my um, great daughter great granddaughters you know right now like I said they're just all holed up in one little house it's too overcrowded the great granny's got great intentions for helping but it's, it's just impossible living like that it cannot happen like that so we are going to wait for uh, this lady to go back to work to deal with this but as of for now for this weekend for the next three nights we want to relieve the tension that's going on there because you know you got little kids in there two other little foster kids in there a 16 month and a third, uh, three year old and then our twins in there as well which is kind of like a crazy house so we just want to um, break off the tension for this weekend until we could talk to the social worker coming monday and tuesday monday or tuesday oh tuesday she'll be in I think it's the fourth yeah but anyway that's our plans right now uh for this day and for this week so we're just um because right now we don't have money we're kind of reaching out right now to uh, for people to help us you know for uh maybe three nights in a room somewhere we still got to look for a place i'm not looking at an expensive place because i know we're not rich well we'll do the best we can and uh, right now I am going to start calling around for uh, see where we can get a room and how much per night. So, but again, we'll figure it out how it, that's going to be. And then again, we'll be all holed up in one room anyways as well. But that's okay with me. Yeah, that's okay. Just as long as I'm there with them is my first uh, main goal. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's what's happening right now. And um, yeah.